Who agrees with me on this? Do you think it's high time we get back to basics? I mean, common sense basics. Let's talk about this back in a minute. Hi, this is Jana from New York City. I'd like to help you either keep or save your money. How's everybody doing today? Hope everyone is doing well, as always. Listen, it's time for us all to get back to basics. Sometimes time goes by and we just, you know, life gets complicated. And sometimes we just create our own complications. But the truth of the matter is we can actually fix that. And one of the things, one of the ways in which we can fix that is dialing it back and going back to basics. Today, I'm going to talk about going back to the basics with money, using less or simply doing without certain things at home. You know, back in the olden days, there was an expression called making do. Making do. Probably our moms, our grandmoms, they, you know, use this expression. We'll just have to make do without it or make do by making do, making the best of utilizing the most, maximizing the most, or simply living without it. This is what we're going to explore for a minute or two today. One of the things that I think that a lot of us do not do, including me, so when I say us, I do mean us, you, me, whatever, just saying, just saying. (laughs) Sometimes we forget. We're human. We forget. But it's great to be reminded by our own selves once in a while. We need to appreciate some of the stuff that we already have. We bought it. We made a purchase of it. It was given to us out of thoughtfulness at some point in the past. And now it's just like, I don't know, it's like a blindsided thing. It's like, oh, it's just there. It's just so used to it. You don't utilize it. I suggest strongly, all of us, if we have a few minutes today, or tomorrow, or next weekend, go through some of your stuff. Don't get crazy about it. Don't get obsessed, whatever. Take an area in your home or apartment. And I'm not talking about decluttering now. I'm talking about rediscovering. It is almost like going on a home scavenger hunt for stuff that you already paid for. How many times have you like, let's say you were on a decluttering project or a mission and you come across something and go, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. Oh my gosh, why didn't I use it? These are things that more than likely someone has paid for. So it's just sitting there. Even if something is of like technical quote, end of quote, dollar value, if it's just sitting there, if it's a practical item, for example, not like a you know portrait that needs to just sit there, <laughs> okay, but if it is a practical, useful item, and it is just literally sitting there in its box, where's the value? I'll give you another example. A lot of people say, oh, you're right. I should use my slow cooker. I always go back to slow cookers because in my personal opinion, and everyone thinks differently, But in my personal opinion, a slow cooker is my best friend all year. Now, some people only associate uh, slow cookers with the cool, um, excuse me, the, um, yeah, the colder months of the year. Think of soups or, you know, stews. Listen, if I want some pot roast, I might want a piece of pot roast in July. Not lying, even even if it's a cold slice. But that pot roast has to get cooked, right? I cannot think of an easier way to do a pot roast than in a slow cooker. But going back to the value, if it's sitting somewhere, if people say, I have one, but I keep forgetting to take it out, maybe you might decide. This is just an example, okay? In your scavenger hunt, you might turn around and say, you know what? I found that. I found that slow cooker. Yay. I have that roast hanging out in the freezer. I'm going to try it the easy way, the no bake in the oven way. Yay. Yippee. Even a novice can do a pot roast in a slow cooker. Just saying, just saying. (laughs) That's just an example. Or some other utensil, that gizmo, that gadget that you had to buy quickly on one of those TV shows with three letters. (gasps) I have to buy that thing yesterday. And then it goes in the closet. Yeah, I'll use it next week. 
Yeah, I'll use it next week. Next week keeps coming. Where is it? <laughs> so not truly appreciating, not truly valuing the things we have. That's wasteful. And you lose out. So it's not fair even to you. You know what I'm trying to say? The object doesn't care if you use it or not. That's just an example. Okay, so start all of us, every one of us, including yours truly, appreciating the things we already have. The next thing, and to me, this is a biggie. A lot of people live to impress others with the things they own. And then some other person who's viewing this might feel insecure because all they see is the exterior external package, the fancy car, the fancy this, the fancy that, the humongous house. Oh. Listen, be content with what you have. How do you know? We don't know the struggle. Some people put up a front. That person with that fancy car could be up to their neck in debt. I'd rather live in a small place and be debt free and not have to worry about debt. I like to know when I make a purchase, I can pay for it outright, not think about it. It's paid for. I'm done for. I'm done, done, done. I don't like living with the elephant in the room. Even if the house is the size of a mansion, there's still an elephant in that person's living room, perhaps. So the impression thing, my personal opinion of impressing, well, what impresses me is loyalty, honesty, truthfulness, godliness, doing the right thing. This is my opinion. This is what impresses me. I am totally unimpressed. And I met a lot of people who are of big means in my life. If they weren't a nice person, I don't care how many things they had. They owned things. But if they weren't a nice person, it didn't impress me. So keeping up with the so-called, you know, Joneses, and I do feel sorry for anyone with that last name because they overly use this uh, euphemism a lot, but this expression a lot. But keeping up with others just for the sheer purpose of impressing, that's expensive. That's expensive financially. That is expensive. More even importantly, emotionally. Can you imagine just like if you live next door to someone that's, you know, constantly showing the flashy stuff or whatever, and you try to be the same, but that's not you. You have to remain your true authentic self. If your true authentic self is a renter of an apartment and likes to keep life uncomplicated and just have a good time and just pay their bills and owe nobody a dime and they're happy doing that, so be it. Yay for them. But having to chase around and be something you're not, that person knows it themselves. It's too much work and too ridiculously expensive putting on false airs. Putting on false airs is more expensive than a person could ever, ever know. Just saying, just saying, just saying. Um. Put your dimes where you give your time. What am I talking about? Don't spend on things you really don't like. If Let's, let's say, for example, um, you don't really want to go on a certain trip, but you're feeling like, quote, end of quote, peer pressure to go on this certain trip. You don't like to go there. You're not interested. It's not a something you want to do. It's, you'd rather put your, quote, dimes in other times. Be honest with yourself. It goes back again to being your own true authentic self. If you're worried about impressing your friends, back to the impressing again, impress friends and family with loyalty, honesty, trustworthiness. To me, that's the most impressive thing a person could do. But if someone invited me to a place that I have zero interest, like totally zero interest in doing, I will be honest and say, I'm you know, really sorry. Thank you so much. Now, of course, those like I always say, always be polite. But I have you know, zero interest in, in attending this thing or whatever. It's not you. 
you tell that person, you know, let it be known. Because if you love your friend, you, you don't want their feelings hurt by any stretch of the imagination. But absolutely, let it be known that, you know, this is something you don't feel like doing. Put your dimes where you spend your time. Things you like to do. Does this make sense? <laughs> All right. So, of course, since I'm a former teacher, but it never leaves you in a way, I have an optional homework assignment for anyone who is interested. Two things. One, go around your home or apartment and ask yourself, do I really need to buy this particular item or product ever again in the future? Ask yourself that question. Next, we're going to talk about how to stretch stuff that we already have. That'll be on tomorrow's show because this whole week, we're going to get back to basics, back to common sense stuff. Common sense is sort of taken a mini hiatus. It's time to bring it back. We need common sense. So whoever is interested in that little homework assignment, let me know in the comment section below where you've come across that you can honestly answer the question, what will I, excuse me, let me rephrase it. Do I really need to buy this particular item again in the future? All right, there you go. Have an amazing, fantastic day, everybody, and take good care. Bye-bye.